The Lion King 2019 is the latest Disney live action remake, although technically this one is actually animated, but we won't go into that debate. And of course, the CGI for this is absolutely revolutionary. It is completely photorealistic. There is one shot of a rhino in the opening circle of life scene. That was the only thing that looked mildly unrealistic to me. You might as well have just been watching a very dramatic, potentially scripted nature documentary. That's how insanely real this looked. There's a very long scene of Simba's fur travelling across Africa until it reaches a certain part of the Pride Lands. And you could see every single tiny part of this tuft of fur. And it went in water at one point in this scene. And you could see how the colour changed in the fur because of it getting damp on top of the water. It was insane. I just couldn't actually believe that I was watching something entirely made in a computer. The best CGI I've ever seen in any film ever. Full stop. And because of this, there is beautiful cinematography, and part of that is they are recreating certain shots, especially with the Circle of Life opening scene, as they've just completely copied and pasted that, basically, but updated the look of the scene. But certain shots of it just look absolutely beautiful, and not all of them are copied and pasted. Some of them are original shots and do look legitimately beautiful. And there are lots of goosebump-inducing moments, such as the aforementioned Circle of Life scene, the Can You Feel the Love Tonight scene, and when Simba overthrows Scar to become the king. Absolutely incredible moments and gave you just pure goosebumps. But again, they're not by the film's own merit. And the music is, of course, absolutely incredible. Some of the most iconic music ever. I love this music so much. It's in my head all the time. It's incredible. But again, it's not the film's own music. And Hans Zimmer returns to give another magical and absolutely enchanting score for both the new and the old and repeated songs that he uses. For example, the theme when Simba overthrows Scar, as well as some other new themes. They all sound beautiful and completely entrance you and make you feel as though you are in this African savanna. And there is phenomenal voice acting from everyone. JD McCreary, who plays young Simba, is just phenomenal. And it was really amazing hearing James L. Jones as Mufasa once again, one of his most iconic roles aside from Darth Vader. And Scar is the only improvement here on the original. He's much more menacing, very villainous. When he killed Mufasa, I just wanted to go up out my seat and scream at him. And he is much creepier. And Chiwetel Ejiofor, because of this, is the standout cast member as he gives Scar a much darker and less cartoonish turn. And it is one of the places where the more photorealistic look actually adds to the original film. It makes him look way scarier and it makes him feel like much more of a threat. However, this is a very, very blatant copy as I think many people were aware of. But for some fans that may just be enough and it almost was for me to be fair because I enjoyed the film. It was just a very blatant copy, like I said, a circle of life scene at the start of the film, completely copied and pasted right down to the title card. Other moments, just the same, for example, Simba taking the throne at the end of it, and Simba and Nala having their own child at the end of the film. It's all completely the same, there's a few new shots, the Beyonce's new song towards the end of the film is very good. But there's very little new, and if you want to go to this film, don't expect anything new. Just expect to enjoy watching the same film, but with a completely different look, and a much better look, to be fair. And the second act of the film, where Simba finds Timon and Pumbaa up until where Nala finds him, completely loses all of the film's energy and momentum, and becomes slow and very boring, to be honest. And because of the fact it's a blatant copy, the film is just completely soulless. I didn't really feel anything apart from the goosebumps and the emotions when Mufasa died and when he became king. I didn't really feel anything other than those. Because of the fact it's a blatant copy and it's completely soulless because of it. Because you know, Disney, they just want their money. And yeah, they've got their money out of it. And there's a bit of a dumb moment where for some reason Nala and Simba sing... Can You Feel the Love Tonight in broad daylight, even though because of the fact this is a fully CGI film apart from one shot, they could just easily have made it take place at night, but for some reason it's in broad daylight, which just annoyed me a bit, but anyway, that was a small thing. I did really enjoy the film, however. It just has its major flaws, and it is a very blatant cash grab, albeit an enjoyable one. So I'm going to give The Lion King 2019 a 6 out of 10.
like I said, it is enjoyable for the majority of the film, and it is definitely worth seeing once by everyone for the CGI, but don't expect a new film. It's exactly the same, few new shots, maybe a slightly lengthened that scene every now and then, but it's just completely the same. But for many of the fans, that may just be enough, and I think people just want nostalgia, and to be fair, the only reason I really wanted to see this was because of the revolutionary CGI, and so I could see a Lion King-esque thing in theatres. So, it did its job for me, and I enjoyed it, and it is worth seeing if you love the original Lion King. Mostly just for the CGI, though. That was my review of The Lion King 2019, and I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.